Greetings and welcome back. Kamal here with a very interesting non-linear differential equation. We have y prime divided by 1 minus y equal to y double prime divided by 1 plus y times y prime. So yeah, that is, that is something, all right. So how exactly should we start? Well, we could move things around and expand the, multiplica the multiplication. But before that, notice that the x term is missing. So we have what's called an autonomous differential equation. So we'll make the substitution that is letting y prime, that's dy by dx, of course, equal to u. Now, this thing implies that d square y, terribly sorry about that, d square y by dx squared equals du by dx, but that introduces the problem of having a differential equation in three variables, which is, of course, not ideal. So we'll expand using the chain rule by writing this as du by dy times dy by dx, and dy by dx is, of course, our u variable. So we have u times du by dy as the second derivative. So with this transformation, our equation transforms into u divided by 1 minus y equal to u times du by dy divided by 1 plus u times y. Okay, cool. Now we'll move things around so that we have u times 1 plus u times y equal to u times 1 minus y times du by dy doesn't look all that bad and we'll expand by 1 by u of course that means we lose the solution of u being equal to 0 but that's something quite trivial right I mean u equal to 0 implies that y here is equal to some constant c which is of course not all that exciting so yeah we're not exactly missing out on much so expanding using 1 by u we have 1 plus u times y equal to 1 minus y times du by dy, and this implies that du by dy equals 1 plus u times y divided by 1 minus y. And all we need now is some algebraic manipulation, and we'll have something quite easy to solve. So we have du by dy equal to 1 divided by 1 minus y plus y divided by 1 minus y times u. And this implies that we have du by dy plus y divided by y minus 1 times u equal to negative 1 by y minus 1. And this here is just a linear differential equation that we can solve quite easily using an integrating factor. So the integrating factor is e to the integral of whatever function of y is attached to the u variable. So we have y divided by y minus 1 dy. And this thing sorts out to e to the integral of 1 plus 1 by y minus 1 dy. Correct? Yeah, that's about right. And on integration, we have e to the y plus log of y minus 1. And we can expand this to get e to the y times e to the log of y minus 1, which implies that our integrating factor is e to the y times y minus 1. So we multiply our differential equation by the integrating factor to get on the left hand side the derivative with respect to y of u times our integrating factor which is e to the y times y minus 1 and on the right we have negative 1 by y minus 1 times e to the y times y minus 1 some nice cancellation. We integrate with respect to y and that gives us u times e to the y times y minus 1 equal to negative e to the y plus some constant of integration a. Now would be a good time to recall that y here, that u here is just dy by dx. So what we have is a separable equation in x and y. So we have dy by dx equal to a minus e to the y divided by e to the y times y minus 1, which implies that e to the y times y minus 1 dy divided by a minus e to the y equals dx. And on integrating, 
the right hand side gives us x plus some constant of integration b and on the left we can make use of the linearity of the integration operator and get e to the y times y dy divided by a minus e to the y plus the integral of negative e to the y dy divided by a minus e to the y. And this here is a pretty standard integral. It sorts out to log a minus e to the y. So this implies that x plus b equals this integral that I'm going to call i plus the logarithm of a minus e to the y. So our next target is the integral i. And for that purpose, the first thing we're going to do is make a substitution that is letting a minus e to the y equal t, which of course implies that y would be log a minus t, correct? And this further implies that negative e to the y dy equals dt. So the integral i transforms into negative integral log a minus t dt divided by t. And this is as far as we can get. That is, we have solved our differential equation for this integral in terms of this integral plus this other function. But we can get a step further by solving it for a special case. And that special case will become apparent when I factor out a from the argument of the logarithm. So we have integral log a times 1 minus t by a dt divided by t. And using the properties of the logarithm and the linearity of the integration operator, of course, we have negative log a times integral dt by t plus integral log 1 minus t by a divided by t. And the special case I'm talking about is for the absolute value of t by a being less than 1, because in that case, we can expand the logarithm as an infinite series. So we have log 1 minus t by a equal to the sum over the positive integers k of t to the k divided by a to the k divided by k. And this implies that i for our special case equals negative log a times log t plus the integral of 1 by t times the sum over k of t to the k divided by a to the k times k dt. We take this 1 by t term inside the summation, and then we switch up the operators, the integration and summation operators, that is, so that we have negative log a times log t plus the sum, terribly sorry about that, the sum over k, of 1 by a to the k times k times the integral of t to the k divided by t, that is the integral of t to the k minus 1 dt, which on integration just yields t to the k by k. So this implies that i here equals negative log a times log t plus the sum over k of 1 by a to the k times k squared, and in the numerator we have t to the k. Now what exactly was the t variable? t was defined as a minus e to the y. So i here equals negative log a times the logarithm of a minus e to the y plus the sum over k of a minus e to the y to the k divided by a squared. No, it, it's a to the k times k squared. And the result, the solution for a differential equation, that is, consists of i plus this log function. And the integral i also contains that same log function, so we can factor it out. This implies that x plus b equals log a minus e to the y times, wait a minute, we have 1 minus log a, and 1 is just log e. So we can write this as log e divided by a plus the sum over the positive integers k of a minus e to the y to the k divided by a to the k times k squared. And of course, this is valid for what case exactly? We had t by a being less than 1 in absolute value terms, and t was a minus 
e to the y, so that means we have absolute value 1 minus e to the y by a being less than 1. And of course, we can tweak this a little bit for the explicit restriction on the y variable. We have 1 minus e to the y by a lying between 1 and negative 1. And this implies that negative 2 is less than negative e to the y by a, which is less than 0, which of course also means that e to the y, terribly sorry about that, e to the y by a is less than 2, and obviously this thing is going to be positive for positive a. So that's another restriction on the constant a, it needs to be positive. And this of course implies that e to the y should be less than 2a, which further implies that y needs to be less than log 2a. Interesting, this was quite different from most of the differential equations I solve, and I found it to be quite nice. I hope you enjoyed the video, be sure to like and subscribe, I hope you learned something from the video as well. Do drop me a follow on Instagram, and in case you like the effort I'm putting out, consider supporting my content on Patreon. Thank you, see you next time.